Hey guys, I know uh, you probably think, man, he just has nothing else to do. And uh, some days I don't. And so I've been spending most of the day praying and thinking and waiting on God and, and doing a few videos. Uh, and I just did prophecy and you know, I, I feel pretty good about it. I feel like it's a good video. I think you should watch it and give me some thumbs up and say, thank you for this great word. Um, but I thought I, I thought I, I was going to do word of knowledge, and I, I'm going to do it probably in a few minutes until I get bored, I guess, of sitting here. But uh, um, there was a couple of things I left out or, or uh, something that, that could be important, um, and I guess I want to share that. But, but there's all such a thing, there's also such a thing as prophetic acts, not just words, but acts, A-C-T-S, acts. And... Uh, I was thinking about a couple of those, and um, they, they, they I, I've seen them be huge blessings. And I, I don't mean like blow the, the horn or do something weird or stomp around the church with a flag. I don't mean anything like that. I mean like God tells you to do something, but you, you, you really never use very many words. Um, and one in particular that stands out, <clears throat> stands out, and my wife, Shannon, is extremely uh, prophetic, um, more so than I am. She just doesn't, she's not as zealous about it as I am, but uh, she, she's more so than I am. Um, and we were, we were adopting Lily, uh, Sophie, and Cole in Siberia. And this was, I think, the last trip. And we were flying into uh, Siberia, and it was cold going in there. We were, we were in the minus... 30 range or 20 range or something like that. It was really cold. And so as we were uh, flying into there, you know, we had a lot of turbulence, okay? And I'm sitting on the, the outside. My wife is in the middle, and there's a little Russian lady on the end. And uh, she is absolutely terrified. This little Russian lady is terrified. And uh, I used to have a, a huge plane terror, and I've had lots of plane crashes. I've never died in my dream, but I've crashed many times in my tornadoes, planes. Usually, I'm stuck at the airport. I can't find my passport, or I got a pack, and I and close. I mean, it's, uh, anyway, just be glad you don't have my dreams. But uh, but uh, this was turbulent. I wasn't scared, and we knew on this trip, we had enough words from God. We we knew we were in great shape. But uh, but this lady didn't know she was sitting next to God's people, and she was terrified. And Shannon is uh, a very non comfort. I mean, she. I mean, if you see her with the kids, I mean, you understand that she she means business. Or if you're under, if you're one of her ballet students, she means business. But the rest of the world sees the sweetest. She is not going <coughs> to overstep her bounds, be impolite, do anything. God's got to almost put her in a chokehold to get her to do something that's really out of the. And this was out of the ordinary. God told her on the plane, "I want you to hold her hand." And of course, I mean, I don't know, it took a half hour to have that argument because I'm not gonna hold her hand. I mean, God, this is a stranger. We're, she's Russian, I'm American. We, you know, you know, we just do that. But finally, Shannon just reached over and held her hand. And uh, it brought peace to the woman. And probably 30 minutes left of this turbulent flight. And when we landed, it looked like we were going between two mountains, but it was just the snow they had pushed off the runway. And so we get in the airport, because we don't understand a word. But anyway, she meets all the people we meet. She starts telling them how, how amazing, you know, my wife is. And, and I remember one of the ladies said, well, you made a friend, you know. But it was a prophetic act. It was something God wanted to do to bring edification and comfort to this lady. Now, we didn't have a chance to talk to her about Jesus. But, but there are acts, A-C-T-S, that sometimes God wants us to do. And it could be a small thing, but it is prophetic. And it does communicate the goal of the prophetic, that, that God loves you, he sees you, he, he, he's encouraging you, he's for you, and all that stuff. So I, 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 I left that out, and I thought about it, uh, and it's, it's hugely important. Um, and um, it's not always saying something. Hang on, I'm, I'm doing something right now. Um, the, the other story I'll just tell real quick, which is kind of a saying, but also a prophetic act. 
was early on. I, I get I got to figure out if I got any later stories because it seems like I keep telling early stories. But but we were in a, a little home group meeting and uh, and uh, there was a guy there. He seemed to be a little bothered. And as we were worshiping, I think maybe towards the end, and a couple of guys went over to pray for him, and he was just uh, kind of melancholy. Uh, and they were praying, and I. I, I mean, I would look, I was like a year old in the Lord. I mean, I probably had no business doing any kind of prophetic act or anything, but, uh, but I felt, I felt it, you know, I just, I was, I was so naive. I didn't know any better, if that makes sense. You know, I just, I just felt it. And so I, I handed him a stack of, uh, magazines and I said, uh, I didn't know this guy really at all. We're good, great friends now, but I didn't know him at all. Um, and I said, this represents the world. And I, and I had his Bible in my hand, or my Bible, I'm not sure which, and I said, this represents God's will for your life. In order for you to get this, you gotta drop that. And he dropped it, he grabbed it. And the weirdest thing happened, he, he, he cried and laughed for an hour. And I don't mean like, he, he, I mean, I mean, like belly gushing, tears streaming, laughing, crying, and and really the whole room. There's like fifteen of us. We were all just kind of weirded out, you know. But years later, he called me when I was going through a hard time, and said, "Hey, I, I felt like, and again, this is a prophetic word." He said, "I was, I felt like, you know, the Lord told me to call you, and uh, and, and the Lord told me." that you, you're questioning whether you've done any good in this world since you became a believer. Now, that was absolutely true. I was going through a hard time, and I was beginning to think nothing I'd ever done had mattered. And uh, he called me just out of the I hadn't talked to him in months, you know. And he said, let me tell you the story. So he told me again the story. And he said, I want you to know that day was the day my life changed. And, and from that point on, I've been a servant of Jesus. And I, he's been a leader. He, he's a leader. As far as I know, he's still a leader in Pine Lake and Clinton. But he, but I'm just saying that little prophetic act changed his life. I had no idea it changed his life. I just knew we had a weird event. But then he comes back and brings me a word that encouraged me um, years later. And, um, you know, he's a good friend. He's a good friend. I'm, I, his name's John. And... Uh, you know, he's a good friend, but uh, I was just wanted to encourage you that that not only is the Lord maybe want you to say something, there may be something he wants you to do. All right. So be sensitive to that and realize that's part of prophecy because edification, exhortation and comfort is the goal of prophecy. All right. And what you're saying to them or what the Lord is saying to them is I see you, I hear you, I care about you, I want you and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, and so. It's not our words that matter. It's what God communicates to their spirits. All right, I hope that blesses you. Um, I'm going to do uh, words of knowledge.